Hello and welcome to Basic to Advanced Microsoft Excel course. This course will give you a deep understanding of Microsoft Excel formulas and functions that transform Excel from basic spreadsheet program into a dynamic and powerful analytic tool. While most Excel courses focus on simply what each formula does, I teach you through hands-on contextual example designed to showcase why these formulas are awesome and how they can be applied in number of ways. You will have lifetime access to project files, quizzes, home exercises and one-to-one -one expert support. You will start with basics building a solid foundation that will give you further knowledge as you progress into intermediate and advanced level topics. After completing this course, you will be able to write powerful and dynamic Excel formulas from scratch and you will be able to automate your workflow with Excel. You will learn unique tips and techniques that you won't find in any other course. You will be able to write advanced conditions, tag, date and lookup functions. You will be able to create pivot tables and charts to visualize your data. Who this course is for? This course is for Excel users who want to learn how to write advanced formulas from scratch. Also anyone hoping to expand their analytical skill set, working efficiency with data and take their career to new level. Students looking for engaging and hands-on and highly interactive approach to Excel analytics training. Excel users looking to build powerful analytical thinking and business intelligence skills. Or anyone looking to pursue their career in analytics data science or business intelligence after completing this course you will get a certificate that you can use to showcase your newly gained skills to your colleagues through linkedin or to your potential employers you can explore the landing page for more details and other preview videos and the curriculum so what are you waiting for enroll now i will see you in the class Microsoft Excel is a spreadsheet program used to record and analyze numerical and statistical data. Microsoft Excel provides multiple features to perform various operations like calculation, pivot tables, graph tools, macro programming, etc. It is compatible with multiple operating systems like Windows, Mac, Android, or iOS. So basically Microsoft Excel is a spreadsheet program that is used to record and analyze numerical and statistical data. So basically you can perform different kind of operations on your data. Either it is mathematical calculation or creating a pivot table or if you want to visualize your data. So basically Microsoft Excel is a collection of rows and columns. All the columns are represented by alphabets and all the rows are represented by numbers and the point where column and row meets that point is called cell so within this plane each cell have its own location or we can say that its own address congratulations on deciding to complete this course just by showing up half of your work is already done I hope that you will maintain the same energy and enthusiasm throughout the course and you will finish this course. Only the students like you encourage us to keep making these courses and keep on adding more and more value to these courses. Our goal is to continue making 5 star courses and keep on updating the resources, test series, exercises, assignments and video lectures. Also. We are committed to answering all your doubts and queries. Let me tell you something about Udemy course review system. After a few lectures, Udemy may ask you to rate this course. We request you to rate this course and provide your honest feedback about this course. Your opinion is not only valuable to us, but also to your fellow students. It will play a big role in shaping our future course material and it will help your fellow students to decide the best course for them. If you feel like you haven't watched enough lectures to rate this course, you can skip it and give your ratings later on from here. If you face any technical difficulties like 
there is no voice or video is blurred you can change it from here if the problem still persist you can contact udemy's technical team i assure you that all our videos are checked by udemy for quality you will face no problems if you are not familiar with my accent or you have hard time understanding it you can see the transcript or you can enable captions if you wants to take a note during the lecture you can do it from here if you feel like the speed of this course is too fast or too slow you can change the speed of the video from here other than that if you have any doubts questions queries or suggestions you can ask them in q and a section i will personally answer all your doubts within 24 hours i want to remind you again that you should rate our course and give your review it will help us making a better course also it will help your fellow students to decide on the best course so all the best and complete the course with full enthusiasm so this area over here is called ribbon this is called ribbon bar so ribbon provide you all the tools that you need to manipulate your data or for calculation and analyzing the data or structuring the data or making it beautiful you will find all those tools over here and these are the sheets and all of your sheets will be represented over here so currently we are at sheet number 1 we can switch to sheet number 2 3 or you can create a new sheet over here by clicking you can see that we have now sheet number 4 sheet number 5 so we can create as many as sheet we want to and you can rename the sheet by right clicking on them you can just click on rename and you can give it a name budget we can give this name so also you can delete this sheet from here or you can make a copy this button over here is zoom button so you can zoom your sheet you can zoom the cells and on this ribbon area we have these different tabs called home tab insert tab page layout formulas data review view also you can customize this ribbon bar to customize this ribbon bar you go to the file and if you go to the options this kind of window will open and if you click on customize ribbon you can customize your ribbon and as you can see that all these main tabs are displayed on this ribbon bar so you can add or remove any tab from here so let's say we remove this review tab and add this developer tab over there and if we click okay so you can see that review tab is gone and we have this new tab over here called developer so you can customize your ribbon bar also you can create your own tab for that you go to the file click on options click on customize ribbon and click on new tab so in new tab you can give a name so to give it a name right click on it and select rename and you can provide any name over here let's say we write job c and click okay so you have created a new tab also we can remove these sub tabs right click on it and click on remove so that is removed now so that sub tab is removed from there and if we want to add anything we can add from this pool 
you can change this pool from here so either you if you click on all commands then you will see all the commands that are present in excel over here and if you click on popular commands you will only see the popular ones and you can select any option from here and you can create groups or sub tabs from here if you click on new group you will get the new group you can rename it either you can select any option from here any symbol from here or you can give a name so if we give it a name commands and we can select any symbol from here and click ok so now our new group is created so we can add anything in this group we can select any command from here and we can add that command over there so if we select this one click on add so this command is added into our group we can select something else let's say table and if we click on add then that command is added over there we click on short ascending and we get command over there so this is how you can create your own tab and if we click on ok you can see that our job c tab is created over here and if we click on it we got all the commands that we selected over there we can customize our spreadsheet even further to do that let's go back to the file and click on options so other than this customized ribbon we have all these other options over here so in journal setting you have all these options over here so you can customize your spreadsheet using these options let's try to change the theme of our spreadsheet to do that you go to color scheme and by default silver is selected but if we select some other theme and click ok you can see that the theme of our spreadsheet is now changed so you can customize like that and if you come to the formulas in formulas tab so in formulas tab you can you got all these options over here so we have this workbook calculation we set it to automatic so that is quite handy and save a lot of time so there are bunch of options over here to choose from so you can customize how formulas will behave from here another tab is proofing in proofing you can check or uncheck these options so while writing should excel check the spellings or what it should ignore or what should it consider you can decide it from here so these are the options that you can use in save tab you can decide where your worksheet will be saved once you save your workbook or worksheet so these are the locations so auto require file location is this one you can change it to whatever you want and default file location is this one so you can change ac according to your preference and we got language option over here so by default english us language is installed so you can choose any other language if you want to there are other options that you can use you can go through them one by one and you will understand what these are so you can customize all other things from here so if we close it so let's click on ok so these are the different customization options that are available to you there are few shortcuts that you should be using while 
working on spreadsheet to increase your efficiency and the shortcuts are so first option is control p control p is used to print the dialog window which means you can print this window so you can use this shortcut control p to print your excel sheet so now you can see this line over here so this will be one page so while printing column a to i will be printed in one page and then columns j to r will be printed in second page so this line over here represent the page breaks and this will be one page and this will be the second page and from beyond this page break will be printed into another page so if we look at our bottom so our first page will be from first row to 47th row and from a column to i column so this is how your spreadsheet will be printed another shortcut is control n control n is used to create new workbook so if we click control n if you see over here now we are working on two workbooks so you just created new workbook by using control n so let's close this one we use control s to save our current workbook we use control c to copy the cells or copy our content so if we click on control c and we can paste it wherever we want to so you can use control c to copy the contents and control v is used to paste them so these are the basic shortcuts that you should use to increase your efficiency while working on excel in this video we will learn about data validation so data validation is used to avoid the mistakes that can be avoided for example many times when we insert our data sometimes we insert some wrong values in it or we can insert something that don't will make any sense so using data validation we can put a check on our data that we are inserting so to use data validation select the cells where you want to use data validation go to the ribbon and click on data tab and here you will find data validation click on this option so if we click on this drop down menu we can select any number from here so if we select whole numbers and here we can select what we want to do with these whole numbers if we want to give some range that our whole numbers must be in between these two values for example let's say minimum and maximum value if we provide that value over here then you can only insert values between your minimum and maximum value if you try to insert something out of your range that is out of the range of minimum and maximum value it will show you an error and you can't insert that value there you can also select note between that your value should not be in this range or there are other options that your value should only be greater than this or not equal to this or only less than a particular value so let's choose less than and if we give a value like 100 we don't want score to be more than 100 that is not possible let's say in this case that is not possible the maximum score you can get is 100 so you can't insert anything beyond 100 so so this is how you can put your condition or create your check in the input message you can provide a message that will be shown whenever that particular cell is selected that you can only insert this this kind of value let's say the message is values 
between zero and hundred and let's create an error message too we can select whether we want a warning or information or we want to stop someone to inserting any value in that we can provide the title of our error let's say we write so if somebody insert a value that is not in between 0 and 100 it then it will show this error so if we click ok and if we select this cell and if we try to insert 105 over here it will show an error the value is not between 0 and 100 so you can't insert this value over here so this is how you can use a data validation to avoid any potential mistake in this video we will learn how we can do mathematical operations on our numerical data in excel to do that we will do addition subtraction division and multiplication so for that we created this table over here here we got serial numbers and here we got the names of our operations here we got our first number second number and here we got our result you can see that the length of this d column is larger than the rest of the columns also you can't see this first number properly in the cell because the width of this cell is lesser than the length of our text so you can change the width of your column to do that you take your cursor over here just in between two columns and you will see these two arrows and if you click on it and drag it you can increase the width of your column so let's do it again for f column little more and same we can do for our d column so as you can see now we can able to see complete text for every cell now you can see that the alignment of our text is towards left hand side and alignment of our numbers or numerical data is towards right hand side we can change that if we want to for example if we want the serial number to the right hand side we can do it from here so these are the alignment options we can use in home tab we go to these alignment options over here so if we click on this you can see that now serial number is aligned towards right for middle we can use this one and towards left we can use this one also we can choose multiple cell to do any operation so if we choose all four of these cells now we can do this operation on all of these cells so when you choose multiple cells that combinations of cell called range so this is the range we got over here and like if you select these many cells so now the range will become this big so there must be an address to this range so the address of this range is the first cell where this range is started so this one over here so which cell is this this is d11 and if we mention this cell that is i22 so this whole range can be represented by the combination of these two cells so address of this whole range is the combination of this first cell and this last cell this is how we define a range or assign a address to our range other thing that you can do is you can choose any font you want to use in your text so by default over here in home tab we got 
a font that is automatically assigned to our text you can change this font and you can choose any font you want to also you can choose the size of your text so by default it is 11 you can make it like 20 then our text will look bigger let's change back to 11 you can change the size of your font from here too so if you click over here it will increase the size and you can decrease it from here also you can make your text bold if you want to from here you can make it italic or you put a underline or your text there are one more option to put double underline so if you select it and if you click on double line then you will able to see double line on your text as we learned in our previous videos you can zoom your sheet so if we zoom it we can see it properly so this is how you can zoom your sheet also you can highlight all the cell where your data is present so our data is present in these cells you can highlight these cells from this option where it called borders so currently no borders are assigned to it so we can assign borders to cells so if we select all borders so you can see that all these cells are highlighted you can see border on these cells you can choose different type of borders so you can choose from this list you can make it really thick border so as you can see that the outline is quite thick and line inside these bigger box are little smaller so you can choose whatever you want to so now let's do this mathematical operations on these cells so to do these mathematical operations we have to use formulas that are already built in excel so you do not have to manually add these numbers or subtract them you can use inbuilt formulas of excel so to use your formulas you write equal to sign and whenever you write equal to sign in your cell excel automatically consider that as a formula so you can add two cells so our numbers are present in f5 and e5 so to add these cells we select the first cell which we want to add then we put plus sign and then we select the other cell and we hit enter so if you do that then these two cells will be added and you can see your formula in this formula bar so whatever formula is used within a cell you can see that formula over here you will see the result of your calculation in the cell but you can see the formula over here you can add some other cell into it so if i write one more plus now we can select any other cell and if we hit enter then that cell will also be added in our result so because we don't want that we remove it and hit enter so you can see the result of these two cells over here and same goes for subtraction to subtract one cell from the another we write equal to sign and then we select our first cell then we write minus sign and then we select our second cell and if we hit enter you will get the subtraction in our new cell you can subtract this cell from this cell to do that you will write equal to sign this time select the second number first and then insert minus sign and then select the other number if you do that you will you can see that there is minus 33 over here 
so we don't want that so let's subtract 3 from 36 so we got 33 over here and same goes for division if we write equal to sign then we select our first cell then we insert division sign and then we select our second cell and if we hit enter we got the result and same goes for multiplication if we sorry if we write equal to and we select our first cell and then we insert multiplication sign and then we select the other one and hit enter so we got our result over here so this is how you can use the simple operators in excel in this video we will learn about filters so if we want to filter our data we can use filter so we can put a filter on our data and we can display our value according to that filter so to use a filter let's say we select all of our data and to use filter in home tab we will go this icon over here sort and filter we select it and if we select this filter over here then a filter is added on all the columns so if we select this one over here we can see all our values over here and like if we uncheck all the age and hit ok so all the rows where 8 was present in score column will be removed from the display and one thing you should know is that row is not deleted from our data it's only hidden so if we go back to our filter and if we check it again we will again see that row over here so there are other options so if we go to number filters we got all these options that is top 10 above average below average so it will calculate the average of our numbers and it will only show the rows which are above average and so same goes for below average so if we select it it automatically find the average of all these values and it only showing the values that are above average so if we go back and if we select below average then it will only show the value that are below the average and we can provide two values if we select between then we can provide two values over here that and we can select all the options from here you can check them one by one and if you want to see all the rows where score is between 50 to 90 we can do that for that we have to select is greater than or equal to so if we select it and if we provide our value over here let's say 50 or greater than 50 and we can select another value less than or equal to let's say we write 100 over here so if we click ok then it will only show the values that are above 50 and below 100 so you have all these options over here less than or greater than you can choose anything there are a bunch of options also you can choose custom filter so custom filter is very similar to our between filter so we can use that we can also provide conditions like we can choose and or or so there are bunch of options that you can choose from hit ok and if you want to uncheck it we can just click on select all and hit ok so then we can see all of our data and if we try to put filter on our this text column that is names 
if we go to the text filters we got all these options over here so if we go to this option let's say begins with and if we write j so all the names that start with j will be displayed then and if we click ok then we got all the names that starts with j so this is how you can use filters so you can sort your data in ascending or descending order so if we select our data and click on sort smallest to largest we got a warning over here the warning is microsoft excel found data next to your selection since you have not selected this data it will not be sorted so so basically we only selected this one column so if we sort our data according to this column so excel gives us two options whether to expand our sorting to all of our data or continue with current selection so let's continue with current selection and click on short so it sorted our data but one thing you should notice is now scores are changed earlier it was not assigned to james so basically changed the data so you need to be very cautious about it whether you want to do it or not so if we only select this column and click on short it will ask to expand your selection so if we select this option over here expand this selection then everything else will also be sorted according to this column so this is how our table looks like now you can you can change it to largest to smallest select expand this selection and click on sort so now our data is from largest to smallest in this video we will learn about grouping so we can group our data in a particular way so we have some data over here so if we select our data and if we go to data tab we can group our data in a particular way so if we click on group we have to select we want to group our data in terms of rows or column so let's click on rows and click on ok so our data is grouped now so you can see a line over here and this minus sign over here so all the rows from third to nine is now grouped so if we click on minus sign you can see that all those lines are collapsed to expand those lines or all those rows we have to click on plus and we got our data over here there is one more option we can ungroup our data using ungroup tab so if we click on it and click ok now we have ungrouped our data and we ungrouped the rows there is one more option over here called subtotal so we can categorize our data using subtotal and we can separately find some calculation for particular data so if we select our data and if we select subtotal so we can select the column for which we want to create a subtotal and let's say we want to find out average of scores so we want average of scores for genders so if we click on ok what it will do is 
it will divide our data based on gender and it will also group our data so this line shows the grouping of data and the smaller line represent the subgrouping so it categorize our data based on gender and it find the average scores so our first entry was james that was male so we got average of all the males but here it was only one male then it went to mary so this was only one female so we got our average over here but robert and john both of them were male so all the males were grouped and we got our average for all the males then there were two females so all the females were grouped and we got our average for those females and we got our total average over here the better way of doing this grouping is we select our data and let's go to the sorting and let's sort our data first so we have sorted our data and if we do the same calculations now let's go to the data and subtotal and we select the same things and click on ok so this make more sense and this is better way of representing our data we sort our data so that all the females are combined together and all the males are combined together so we got the average for females and we got the average for males and we got average for all of our entries so this is the better way of grouping the data here we got only two groups but if our data is not sorted then it will create many groups so this is more efficient way of grouping or subgrouping in this video we will learn about some common functions that you can use in excel so we have a data over here this is a home budget data so we have our grocery items over here and we have their quantity and we have their price and if you want to calculate total price for each category we can use mathematical formula we can write equal to then we select our cell then we add multiplication sign and then we select our second cell and if we hit enter we got our multiplication over here now we have to do the same thing for rest of these items but we don't have to type the formula every time for all these items we can just select this cell and go to this corner you see that the plus icon is changed and when it changed you click and drag it down so if i click on it and drag it down excel will automatically apply the same formula for rest of the rows and you can see the formula over here so the formula is h9 multiplied by i9 so this h9 is multiplied by i9 and if we select this cell we can see the formula over here h10 is multiplied by i10 so we can use this feature of excel to avoid repetitive work another way to fill up these rows automatically we select this cell we go to the corner when plus icon changed just click on it two times if you click on two times it will automatically fill rest of the rows so you can either use dragging method or you can just click two times and it will do the same thing and if you want to find out total quantity we can use equal to sign then we can select our cell then we can add another cell to it 
and we can repeat this process till we reach our last cell and so we reached our last cell and if we hit enter it will provide us with the result but this is not the most efficient way of doing it if there are thousand rows and you want to calculate the result for thousand rows it will be really repetitive and hectic to select every row to add all those rows so if i remove this result we can use inbuilt sum formula so home tab if you go over here you can see this addition icon over here if you click on drop down you can select the sum formula from here and it will automatically select the range for you and if you hit enter you will get the result or you can type the formula on your own if you write equal to sum and within bracket if you select all the rows which you want to add then it become a range that is h8 to this colon represent 2 we are selecting from h8 to h12 this cell is represented by h8 and this cell is represented by h12 and if we close our formula and if we hit enter we will get our result and now we can just drag this cell to other cells and same formula will be applied to all these other columns too so this is how you can use some formula you can make it bold so we have this total sum over here subtotal over here and this is how you can use some formula in this video we will learn about minimum and maximum formula if you want to minimum value from these cells we can write equal to min and we can select our range and if we close it and hit enter then we will get the minimum value from all these cells and if we drag it so we will get minimum value for price minimum value for subtotal and you can see your formula in the formula bar you can also find a minimum formula from here in the similar way you can find the maximum value so if i write maximum and if we write equal to sign and max within brackets we can select our range and if we close it and hit enter we will get the maximum value and we can drag it down in this video we will learn about average function so we can find out the average of all these quantities so to use average function write equal to average and we can provide the range that we want so we have provided the range and if we hit enter we will get the average of all the quantities and if we drag it down we will get average value for both of these columns too there is an another function called average if so we can put a condition that if only if the condition is satisfied then only calculate the average so if we use this function then we provide the range so we have this range and after comma we can provide our condition so within quotes if we write greater than 3 so what it will do is it will first check this condition if the value is greater than 3 then only this formula will consider that value so there is one value that is lesser than 3 so while calculating average this average if formula will ignore 2 
and calculate uh, the average for 6, 5, 5 and 6. So if we hit enter, you can see that we have a new average over here. This average is for 6, 5, 5 and 6. So we get 5.5 and if we drag it and you can see that here the average remains the same because all the entries in price column and subtotal columns are greater than 3. So that is why it is considering all the rows. In this video we will learn about count function. So we can find out the number of quantities. So if we select a range then we can count number of entries in that range. So to use count function we write equal to count and within bracket we will mention our range and if we hit enter we get the number of entries and if we drag it we will get the same value. Also you can select multiple ranges so to select multiple ranges you just insert comma and then you can select another range and if we hit enter we get the count value of both of those ranges so you can select multiple ranges using comma from this video we will learn about some numerical functions so first numerical function that we will learn is checking whether a value is a numerical value or not so if you want to check if a value is numeric or not we can use equal to and if we write is number and then we can select the cell for which we want to check whether the value is numerical or not and if we hit enter it will return a boolean value so there are two boolean values true and false these two values are called boolean values so boolean values are used to represent whether a statement or condition is true or not so if the statement or condition is true then we will get true value and if it is not true we will get false value so because 2 is a number so we get true over here let's write our formula name first so we got this value and if we check it for text if we select a text and if we hit enter you can see that we got a false value because the text is not a number in this video we will learn about rand function so rand function is used to create random values between 0 and 1 so if we want to create random values then we will use rand function so if we write rand and if we hit enter we will get a random value and if we drag it down so we will get values that are between 0 and 1 and all these values are random values and one thing you should know is these random values will change whenever you refresh your worksheet if you don't want to do that you can just copy all these values and go to the paste so if you go to the paste you will get all these options over here so you do not want to paste the formula if you directly click on paste it will not paste the values but it will paste the formula so if you don't want that you go to the paste click on drop down menu and click on values so if you click on values it will only paste the values not the formula so as you can see that now our spreadsheet is refreshed so the values are changed now so we got new values over here now because here we are using rand function but these are static values these are not formulas so these will remain the same you can also provide a specific range that you want the values in between so you can create random values between two specific values so to use this formula we will write equal to 
rand between and then you will provide the bottom value let's say we want to create random values between 50 and 100 so first value will be the bottom value and second value will be the top value and if you close it and hit enter you will get a random value between 50 and 100 so if you drag it down you will keep getting random values that are between 50 and 100 so that was rand function or rand between function in this video we will learn about round function so round function is used to round off the decimal values so if we have a value and we want to round off digits after the decimal let's say we only want two digits after decimal from this number so we can use round of function to use round of function we will write equal to we will write round and within brackets we will select our number and after comma we mention how many digits we want after decimal let's say we want two digits after decimal and if we hit enter then it will remove all the digits after two decimal points in this video we will learn about median function so median function is used to find out the medium value from a range of values so to calculate medium we will write equal to median and then we can manually give the numbers like 2 3 5 8 and if we close it and hit enter we will get the median value also we can select a range to select a range we just write median and then we can select the range and we will get the medium value for this range so we get the medium value over here in this video we will learn how we can find out power of a specific number so to use this function we will write equal to power and we will give the number let's say we want the power of 2 and after comma we provide the power so let's say we want 2 to the power of 4 and if we hit enter we will get our value from this video we will learn about string functions so first one is left function using left function we can take a part from a string or text so we have this text over here called jobsy academy and if we want to take out some part of this text we can do that using left function so to use left function we will write equal to left and within bracket we provide our text so this is our text and after comma we provide the number of characters that we want from left side of our string so if we provide let's say five characters then it will take five characters from the left hand side of this string and if we hit enter so we get the five characters from this string from the left hand side in the similar way we can use right function in right function we can get the part of our text from the right side so if we write our formula and we provide our text and if we give number of characters that we want let's say give three and hit enter so we got last three characters from our text not only that we can slice the text from the middle to do that we will use middle function and if we write equal to mid and we provide our text after comma we will give the start number means that the place where we want to slice our 
text so let's say slice our text from s so s is at fourth number so let's write four over here and after comma we provide number of characters that we want from the given number so let's say we want three characters from s so if we close it and hit enter then we got s h i so we got s h i so we got fourth character fifth and sixth so this is how you can slice a text according to your needs in this video we will learn about find and replace function using find function we can find out the position where a particular character or a group of character exist within a text so if we want to find out this where this ac exist in our text we can do that using find function so to use find function we will write equal to find then we provide the text which we want to find out and one thing you should remember is that this is case sensitive so you have to mention your text in proper case so here a is capital and c is in lower case so we provide ac and then we provide the text from which we want to find out this substring or subtext and here we can mention from where we want to start the search by default it will start from the first character but you can mention from where you want to start so let's not mention that it will start from the first character and if we enter it so we got this 9 over here so ac is present at ninth position so there are seven character in job c and one in space so total eight characters and this ac is starting from ninth character so this is how we can find out the position of our substring or subtext also we can replace the substring or subtext to do that we will use replace function to use replace function we will write equal to replace here we mention our text so this is our text and then we mention which we want to replace so let's say we want to replace this aca so we provide ninth position because a is starting from 9 and then we provided number of characters that we want to replace so we want three characters to be replaced so we provide three over here and then we mention the text we want these three characters to replace with so let's say we want to replace it with a b so we will write a b let's make a smaller so that we can know the difference and if we close it so we get our string now this a c a is replaced with a b a in lower case and b in upper case so this is how we can replace a substring from our text in this video we will learn about date functions so first function is date so date function will provide us the excel code for a date if we provide year month and day in our date function so to use date function we will write equal to date and we have to provide the year let's say 2022 then we have to provide the month let's say 10th and then we provide the day so let's provide 15 if we hit enter 
it will provide the date if we mention it will give us the date if we mention year month and day another function is day function so day function will give us the day if we provide a date so to use day function we write day and then we provide the date so we provide this date and hit enter it will give us the day so here 9th is the month and 5 is the day similarly we can find out month so to use month function we write month and then we provide the date and if we hit enter it will provide the month and same goes for year if we write here and if we provide our date and hit enter it will provide the year in similar way we can get the minutes if we have written a timestamp over here we can get the minutes from it so to get minute we will write equal to minute and if we mention our timestamp and hit enter it will provide us with the minute in this video we will learn about if condition if condition is used to check whether our values satisfy a specific criteria or not and if the values satisfy the criteria then it should do one thing and if it does not satisfy the criteria it should do the other thing so let's understand it by example here we have this data in our item column we have these list of items and in quantity column we have their quantity in price column we have their price and in subtotal column we have their total value so we have to find out whether a specific item is affordable or not so let's say items above 80 rupees are not affordable and below 80 rupees are affordable so we can use if statement to find out whether any item is affordable or not so to use if statement we will write equal to if and within these brackets we provide our condition so we want the value below 80 so if this value is less than or equal to 80 then we put a comma and here we mention if this condition is true then what we want to happen so if this condition is true we want to print yes after comma we will provide what should happen if the condition is false so if condition is false we want to print or we want to display no and if we close this and if we hit enter so we got our result over here so result is no we can't afford this particular item so if we drag it down then we will get the result for all the values so we can afford apples but not lemons cooking oil and oranges so this is how you can use if condition in this video we will learn about if error condition so if error condition is used to handle errors so sometimes whenever we enter some value or do some calculations there may be a situation where error occurs for example if we divide something by zero if we write equal to 5 divided by 0 we know that we can't do it we can't divide anything with 0 so if we hit enter it will give us this text so this is a little scary text so it's not easier to understand so what we can do is we can display any statement we want to instead of this random text so using if error condition we can handle these errors so to use if error condition we will write equal to 
if error and then we select the cell and now we can mention what we want if the function come across an error so if there is an error we want to write display this is not a valid calculation and if we hit enter so as you can see we got this statement written over here instead of error but if the calculation is valid then it will show the calculation for example if we write 5 divided by 2 and we got this value over here and if we want to use this formula let's say equal to if error and then we provide our value and if we write what we want to happen if it faces an error so in this condition it will not face any error so if we hit enter it will give us the result so if and only if it faces the error it will display that text in this video we will learn about nested if statement so nested if statement is used when we want to include multiple conditions so let's say we want to be specific about where we want to buy these items so there are different places from where we want to buy these different items so for that we can use multiple conditions using if statement so to use nested if statement we will write if then we will mention our condition so our first condition is if the contents of this cell is equal to mangoes then we want to display this text that means if there is mangoes in our this cell then we want to specify that buy the mangoes from pacific mall and if this condition is false which means mangoes are not in our cell then we want to include one more if statement so we will write if and then we write our condition so our condition is if this cell contains apples then we want to display buy from albert store and if anything else is there so we have mentioned a specific condition for these two items that mango should be bought from pacific mall and apple should be bought from albert store for anything else we want to display local shop and if we close our if conditions and if we hit enter then you can see that for mangoes we have specified this condition buy from pacific mall and if we drag it down then you will see that the statement or condition is applied to all of these items so if mangoes buy from pacific mall if apples buy from albert store and for anything else buy from local shop so this is how we can use nested if condition in this video we will learn about and operator so and operator is used to find out if the multiple conditions are true or not and if all of the conditions are true then it will return the value true or it will display a boolean value that is true and if all the conditions are not true then it will return false so to use and operator we will write equal to and then we provide our first condition so our first condition is we want to check whether the quantity are greater than 5 or not so our first condition is this and our second condition is we want to check if the price is less than 40 or not so in our second condition if we write less than 40 so we have provided two conditions over here 
we can provide as many as conditions we want to and all of those condition needs to be true in order to get the true result from our end operator so for now we are only using these two conditions so if we close it and hit enter so we get the false value so our conditions were the quantity should be greater than 5 and price should be less than 40 so this condition is not satisfied even though this condition was satisfied so still the result is false because in order to get true result both of these condition needs to be true so if we drag it down then we get our result so both of these conditions were not true for all of these items but for this item both of these conditions were true in this video we will learn about or operators so in or operator we give multiple conditions and if any one of them is true or all of them is true then the result will be true and if all of the conditions are false then only or operator will return the false value so to use or operator we will write equal to or and then we provide our first condition so first condition should be so quantity should be less than 5 then we can provide our next condition our next condition is price should be less than 40 so these are the two conditions we are providing so if both of these conditions are false then it will give us the false result but if any one of the condition or all of the conditions are true then it will give us the true result so if we hit enter we got false value for this item and if we drag it down we got true value for all of these items because at least one of the condition is true for these items in this video we will learn about vlookup function vlookup stand for vertical lookup we use vlookup function when we have a particular value and we want the data associated with that value for example when we use a phone directory we have the name of the person but we don't have his phone number so to find out the phone number we go through the directory and we find the name and when we find the name then the data associated with that is number so we get that number we can do the same thing in excel so if we provide name then we can get the phone number of that person so if we have a particular value we can get the values associated with it so we have few names and phone number over here in this table so to use vlookup we will write equal to v lookup and in parentheses the first argument is the value we have so i mentioned this cell because we are going to write down name in this cell that we want the number of and after comma we will select the range or all the columns or the complete table so we have this table over here so we selected all the column and then we put a comma and after comma we mention the column number where our data exist so the phone numbers exist in this column so this column is at the second position from the names column so we write two and after comma we can mention either true or false true is to find the approximate match and false is used to find the exact match because we want the exact match we will write false so if we hit enter 
as you can see that we got na value over here because we haven't mentioned our name in this cell so if i mention the name and hit enter we will get the phone number let's make this column a little bigger so we get our phone number and if we mention any other name olivia and hit enter so we get the number for olivia same way if we write emma over here and if we hit enter we got the number for emma so this is how you can use vlookup function in this video we will see how we can create a pivot table so we have this data over here this data is the data of titanic ship so we have these different columns over here in first column we have passenger id in second column we have whether that passenger is survived or not in third column we have class which passenger class that person belongs to in d column we have names in e column we have sex in f column we have age sib sp represent sibling or spouse path represent number of parents or guardians we got ticket number over here we got fare and we have the cabin number and uh, embarked which means where the passenger is headed to so this is the data we got if we want to create the pivot table of this data set we can create it from here we go to the insert tab and you can see the pivot table over here so pivot table is created to summarize the data so if we create the pivot table for this data set we click on this pivot table then it will automatically select the complete data and here you can mention whether you want your pivot table in this worksheet or you want a new worksheet so if we select new worksheet and click on okay a new worksheet is created over here and we can create our pivot table over here so if you look at the right hand side you can see all the column names that we can include in our pivot table and from here we can decide the layout of our pivot table so let's select our columns and we can select survived and if we select the survived column and class column sex column age fair so we have selected these five columns so this table is created over here and we can modify this table the way we want to so automatically it divided the data into male and female so we got male and female over here and we got sum of survived which means how many people survived in male and female so 233 female survived and 109 male survived so you can conclude that female survived more in this climate in this column we got the sum for passenger classes and in this last column we got the sum of the fare from here we can decide the layout of our table so if we shift the sum of passenger class to our row numbers and if we open it in this data you can see that the age of this female was 0.75 it means she was a baby and her passenger class was 3 and we got another baby over here of 1 year same class we got a baby of 2 years there were so you can see that there were children's so basically children's belong to second third there was one children that belong to first class you can see the complete data over here and same for the male so you can shift them around and you can decide whether you want them in 
columns or rows or you want their submission or you want their value to be calculated and you can change whether you want sum or any other calculation so if you click on it you got this menu over here in this menu you if you go to this field value field setting you can choose whether you want sum count average mean max so you can decide how you want to calculate the value so if we select count and hit ok so you will get the count for number of survived so this was the pivot table that you can draw in this video we will learn about charts charts are used to visually represent our data so we have this data over here and if we want to visualize this data we can use charts so to create charts go to the insert tab in menu and now let's select our data so this is our data after selecting the data if you click on any of the charts we got the options of all kinds of charts so let's create pie chart in pie chart you got all of these different options so you can choose any of them let's click on first one and now you can see that we have created our chart and now we can visually represent the data now we can see the whole data in the visual form and we can see that the estimated expense on our different categories so this data belongs to marriage expenses so this is how our data looks like and you can change the theme of this graph from here you can choose any theme so this is how you can create pie chart from a given data and similar to the pie chart you can create column chart so to create column chart we can select our data and if we click on this column and now we can choose any type of column chart we want to so let's choose this first one so you can see the result of our column chart from here there are different themes to choose from in this video we will learn about line chart so similar to pie chart and column chart we can create a line chart so to create line chart we have to select our data so let's select our data and if we click on line chart we can select any kind of line chart so if we select this first one the line chart is created over here even though line chart can be used for any type of data but commonly it is used when we have to represent change in value over time on x axis we can represent different times or different dates and on y axis we can represent value so this is how we can create line chart so similar to these charts we got other options too so we have this bar chart option you can choose any of the charts we got the area chart or we can draw this scatter plot also we can draw these all other charts donut charts bubble charts radar charts surface chart stock chart so you got all of these different options to choose from so this is how you can insert chart for your data congratulations on completing the course it shows your dedication and commitment now it's time for celebrations after completing this video you will get your course completion certificate through your registered email or you can download it from here please make sure that you have completed all the lectures and make sure 
there is a tick mark in front of all the lectures. If it is missing for any lecture, you can tick it manually. If you still can't download the certificate, you can contact the Udemy customer support. I request you again to rate this course and give your review from here. All the best for your future endeavors. Bye-bye.